if, if you're born into a crazy place and you're brought up in the crazy place and you become an adult in the crazy place and all you've ever known in your life is a crazy place, then to you, crazy is normal. Um, and when someone comes from, from um, outside or has started to see it from inside and says, actually, this is a crazy place. Well, you are seen as crazy because you're not normal. You're not the normal, that is actually madness, that people have become used to. And this is, a, this is the thing, uh, Brian, you know, what is normal? Normal is only what we normally experience. So if you are um, living in the outback of Australia, your normal is never seeing uh, uh, anyone pass your house, never seeing a vehicle. But if you're born in downtown London or live here, your normal is never not seeing vehicles and people everywhere. And, and so when a, when a vehicle passes someone in the outback, they say, oh, look, there's a car. That's not normal. And then someone walks down a, an empty London street and they say, oh, dear, what's going on? That's not normal. Um, normal is only what we normally experience. Google-owned YouTube suffered a major outage last night. The website was down for almost two hours. RT Sarah Montez de Oca joins you with the story. And Sarah, there were some very upset, very scared people last night when they realized they didn't have their YouTube videos. Scotty, this is the world's second most visited website. YouTube is a service that many people nowadays even pay for. So you can imagine the shock and blow up this caused. And even a Philadelphia police officer uh, had to t tweeted out that said he was receiving 911 phone calls. Okay, that's that's so wrong. it was qu quite that's obsessive. Wrong, yes. So just yesterday, Google owned YouTube went down for over an hour. The second most visited website in the world experienced an outage late Tuesday night. Users took to social media in outrage. YouTube took to Twitter apologizing for the inconvenience, but gave no reason for what actually caused the outage. Earlier this year, YouTube TV, a paid live streaming service, was down for around 40 minutes. This was during a 2018 World FIFA World Cup game. The online outage has been just the latest. This in a string of concerning headlines for YouTube parent company Google. Building on our coverage last week in what's been a very controversial step, it now looks like Google plans to move forward with a censored search engine in China. Google CEO Sundar Pichai took the stage on Monday at Wired 25 Summit. He acknowledged that they tested the software in China. Pichai doubled down on the search engine codenamed Project Dragonfly. He said that there's potential to expose the world to more information. It turns out we'll be able to serve well over 99% of the queries. We are compelled by our mission to provide information to everyone. And China is 20% of the world's population. Pichai wants to make information universally accessible. And following Google's 20th birthday, he says they feel rejuvenated about working on a core problem of information. And in order to globally expand, they need to follow laws in every single country, including China and their censorship policies. Now, this comes week after Vice President Pence slammed Google for appeasing China. More business leaders are thinking beyond the next quarter and thinking twice before diving in to the Chinese market if it means turning over their intellectual property or abetting Beijing's oppression. But more must follow suit. For example, Google should immediately end development of the Dragonfly app that will strengthen the Communist Party's censorship and compromise the privacy of Chinese customers. But Pence wasn't the only one with criticism. In August, Google employees wrote a letter to their employer, and they addressed their concerns and ethical responsibility for transparency. More than 1,000 employees signed that letter. And just last month, seven Google employees reportedly quit their jobs, this due to the lack of transparency over the controversy. But this also isn't the first time that Google looks to China for new business. Back in 2006, Google had set up shop there. And in 2010, the tech giant announced that it was leaving China. This was after Google discovered a cyber attack from within the country targeting Google and dozens of other companies. But after nearly a decade of growth and expansion, the company is poised to try again. Scotty, there's no word as to when the product will actually launch, but sources are saying that this could be ready in anywhere from six to nine months. And thus, if we live in a crazy place, then that's what we normally experience, and this is how things are. And you're born into a world, and when, when you, you come into the world, 
it's got great relevance for what's going on now, actually, this, um, then you take the world to be as it is when you arrive. So while Google kills contracts that help our nation's defenses, opting instead to help China's AI, Amazon puts America first. Despite getting flack from sheltered employees who think national security is for losers, CEO Jeff Bezos sticks to his guns. Here he is at a conference on Monday. We are going to continue to support the DOD, and I think we should. I'm, you know, I, it doesn't make any sense to me. Sometimes one of the jobs of a senior leadership team is to make the right decision, even when it's unpopular. And if, if big tech companies are going to turn their back on the U.S. Department of Defense, this country is going to be in trouble. Good for him. Now, compare that common sense to Google's virtue signaling cowardice. First, Google suspended its contracts with our military when some workers whined about it. Then they helped China create a search engine that censors criticisms of its leaders, which suits Google since they'll remove anything that upsets them. Ask James Damore. Apparently, this tech titan thinks it's more evolved than the country it exploits. Defense is so yesterday. Security is for fascists. Plus, they're terrified of the activists in the company cafeteria. Google ignores their heroic predecessors, like Ford and Douglas Aircraft, or tech geniuses Alan Turing and Norbert Wiener. Turing helped invent modern computing, but also broke secret codes to beat the Nazis. Mathematician Norbert calculated rocket trajectories during the same war. Even movie stars like Hedy Lamarr helped out. She came up with a guidance system for American torpedoes. Top that, Taylor Swift. These people didn't care about PR. They cared about a country's survival. But not Google. They may be the greatest search engine on Earth, but the one thing they'll never find is a spine. <laughs> so you come into a crazy place, but, well, this is how it is. So you don't see it as crazy. Uh, and therefore, um, when someone like me is questioning everything about the crazy place and seeing if it stands up to scrutiny, and most of it doesn't, then, of course, mainstream society is going to see you as mad. Gunfire and terror at YouTube headquarters in California. New information still is coming in, but we now know the shooter was a woman. I'm being discriminated and filtered on YouTube. And I'm not the only one. So recently, they also attacked my Persian channel, Nassim Asafs. And I take that as a compliment. It's one of the things I say in the book, to be called mad by, by, by an idiot, as I put it, is, is a compliment. And I've been called mad by many idiots over the years, I can tell you. Um, many of them journalists, funny enough. Who is complaining? We're talking Facebook, okay? They just announced that they purged more than 800 spam accounts for spamming users with garbage links and clickbait. Okay, so Facebook says the accounts in question spread sensational political content. Yeah, that's in their words. And they say it's designed to drive people to websites that are outside of Facebook. Now, in the past, you know, spammers have often focused on celebrity gossip, weight loss, remedies, and fake iPhones. I'll be honest, something tells me they'll be purging even more pretty soon. Um, but uh, it's, um, it's just something you have, to, you have to live with and you have to come to terms with and accept. When you're challenging normality, then that which has accepted normality to be the real world is going to see you as crazy. Brett Larson, he's morning anchor on Fox News Headlines 24-7 on Sirius XM, and it's good to have hey, you here. So here. the alert worked, it but worked my phone him. is on silent. So, so is mine, and I haven't gotten the alert yet. Uh, what's interesting about this is the alerts actually it goes from FEMA. It actually goes to the cell towers, and the cell towers will start sending out the alert over and over for about a half hour uh, period of time until everyone who has their phone on gets it. If you have your phone turned off right now, if you leave it off for the next 45 minutes or so, it's, I it's did get the alert. It just didn't make the sound. Um, so, the yeah, I got the alert. I mean, I must be on a special list that you're not on. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you have a different security. It's a, it's a good idea, I think, you know, to have this system. It is a good idea. Listen, we've all, as, as Doug mentioned, we've all gotten the alerts before. I remember many years ago during Hurricane Sandy, yes. you know, standing out watching the Hudson River come up the street and all of us standing there got the emergency alert about flash flooding all at the same time. It's a good idea when you consider how much, how much of, how many of us rather are using our cell phones and aren't necessarily we don't have a, a radio in our pocket mm -hmm. though we do have a radio based on that's what our cell but phone is. But flooding and amber alerts are, those are pretty localized events. They are. What would what would be an issue that would rise to the occasion? I mean I could imagine but 
Yes. What we could, do we know? We would I, we would assume something like a 9/11 attack would uh, result in a alert like this. Uh, something that definitely has an mm -hmm. effect nationwide. Not as you mentioned, like an Amber Alert is going to be localized. Flooding, weather alerts, those are very localized, which is great. But in if those you local if you areas. get one of these for reals, but if you get it for reals from the president, it is definitely one to pay All attention right. to. And hopefully, we will not have a, a situation like we had in Hawaii several months ago, yeah. where someone accidentally, accidentally right. And I'm sorry you still aren't on the list. <laughs> I'm still not on the Apparently. list. Apparently, Brett Larson think... will check into that. We will call 1600 <laughs> Pennsylvania Avenue and find out what's happening. When you drive up to the Sunspot Solar Observatory, you can drive right through. Both the yellow caution tape and the stop sign are gone, but there is an armed security company patrolling the property. Just to make sure that everyone's safe and sound, nobody's houses are getting broken into, and everyone's A-OK. -okay. Guards from Red Rock Security and Patrol have been working in Sunspot since Friday morning. While the observatory and the community around it was still closed off. We turned away, I think it was 150 plus people that were coming up. They no longer need to turn people away, but the reason for the closure and evacuations remains a mystery. There was a lot of people, you know, that came this morning. They were like, so what's going on? And had so many questions. And the only thing that I could tell them is I'm just as clueless as you are. And I'm just as curious. The Association of Universities for Research in Astronomy, or Aura, initially told us the observatory had to be evacuated on September 6th due to a security issue. But that's all they would say. Now Aura tells me there is an ongoing law enforcement investigation of criminal activity that occurred at Sacramento Peak. Also saying we became concerned that a suspect in the investigation potentially posed a threat to the safety of local staff and residents. I asked Aura who the suspect is, what charges they're facing, what kind of criminal activity took place. I also asked why there was only caution tape at the entrance and why no one was guarding it. Aura responded to me saying it can't comment on an ongoing law enforcement investigation. One of the staff members here tells me the big focus today is rebooting computers and getting everything back up and running that hasn't been touched in nearly two weeks. Reporting from Sunspot, Justin Matthews, KOAT, Action 7 News. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dana. Can't be any other way. Mm. Thing is, though, and I found this over the last nearly 30 years, if what you say has validity, and you keep saying it, despite all the abuse and all the ridicule, you keep saying it. If it has validity, that's the key. If it doesn't, then it won't go anywhere. But if it does, eventually it will be shown to be so. AT&T is the nation's fastest 3G network, so you can download faster on your smartphone than Verizon. With 4G from Sprint, I can download files up to 10 times faster than 3G. Upload 10 photos in a minute. Verizon 4G LTE. Get ready for more ads like those. The wireless industry is in a race to roll out 5G service. Now, 5G is supposed to be up to 100 times faster than current data speeds. Could have used it on Amtrak yesterday. But it requires cell phone tower equipment to be closer to users than ever before. And that is causing outrage and alarm in some neighborhood as antennas go up around the homes. Tony DeCoppola is here with both sides of the conversation. Tony, lots of chatter about this. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. There's outrage, but there's also excitement. I mean, yeah. 100 times faster. But get this, wireless companies in the U.S. say they'll have to install about 300,000 new antennas for the rollout of 5G. That is roughly equal to the total number of cell phone towers built over the past three decades. The faster network could create new potential for work and play, but it's also leading to new concerns. Go. <laughs> At a lab in New York, Verizon invited us to meet some of the entrepreneurs developing tools to run on the next generation of wireless technology. How important is 5G to your mission? 5G is extremely important. Jonathan Reeves demonstrated his product, Arvizio. As you move around, the object stays fixed in space. Look at that. That's amazing. Allowing users in different locations to interact with 3D images projected through a lens. Today we, do, we can do this using Wi-Fi technology and we can do it using landline technology. But of course you're then tied to particular locations. With 5G now we can begin to extend this so we can actually begin to start doing this on building sites. We can start doing it on the factory floor. So it really opens up a whole new world. But before this world can become reality, this one needs to change. 5G requires the installation of new equipment across the U.S. So this pole here is 5G. This is the future right here. You got it. Every wireless company is working to build its own 5G network. 
Melissa Arnoldi leads AT&T's efforts. If you don't already have one of these in your neighborhood, yep. they're coming. That's absolutely right. They're coming. She says 5G uses high frequency waves that support faster speeds, but don't travel as far as current wireless frequencies. So instead of relying on large cell phone towers spread far apart, they need small cell sites that are much closer together. We're going to use our existing infrastructure today, whether it's light poles, whether it's street lights. We're going to make sure that we don't make it obtrusive to our customers and to the citizens. Yet some don't share the enthusiasm. The cell towers are called small cell towers, but they're not so small when they're in your front yard. Donna Barron is protesting plans to convert light poles in her Montgomery County, Maryland neighborhood into small cell sites. This will cause cancer. She was one of several people who raised health concerns at a government hearing last month. This stuff is untested on kids. Their safety is not certain. These untested technologies are, at this time, not ready to be unleashed into our lives. Cell phone equipment emits radiation, but research on its health effects has been inconsistent. According to the National Cancer Institute, a limited number of studies have shown some evidence of statistical association of cell phone use and brain tumor risks but most studies have found no association. If you lose this fight and a pole goes in right here, are you going to move? Um, possibly. Either way, Barron says she fears property values could plummet when 5G equipment pops up. If a tower goes up right there, what's going to happen to the value of that home? It could drop 20 percent. And not only for this house. Right, for that house, that house, that house. And then pretty soon you go around the curve and there's another cell tower. They're all through this neighborhood, so it's going to devastate the neighborhood. Arnoldi insists her workers are focused on safety, pointing out they live and work near this equipment, too. Do you have any 5G antennae in your neighborhood yet? No, not yet. I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. It's coming soon, though. It's coming soon. So I'm guessing from that reaction, then you're, you're very comfortable with it rolling out in your uh, neck of the woods. Absolutely. A absolutely. You know, look, this is our... Wireless carriers have announced plans to roll out 5G service to a handful of cities later this year, but don't get too excited to really take advantage. You'll need a 5G enabled device, which probably won't be available until next year. So our current phones aren't 5G ready? They're not 5G ready. The pole outside your house might be 5G ready, but your phone is not. Yeah, it's going to have to upgrade. Yeah. Tony, thanks. And that's the process that I've been through. Um, it's nothing like completed yet, but it's moving that way, where world events are concentrating people's minds on the fact that the world isn't like they thought it was, and they don't like the way the world's going, they feel uneasy about it, and um, that has got people to, in greater numbers, to look at what I've written in the past, which is basically saying the world that we have now, and we're going deeper into, is the one that's been planned all along. Coming up, the government's bizarre experiments in mind control using human guinea pigs. For too long, politicians have tried, oh, have they tried, to centralize authority among the hands of a small few in our nation's capital. I see them all the time. Bureaucrats think they can run over your lives, overrule your values, meddle in your faith and tell you how to live, what to say, and where to pray. But we know that parents, not bureaucrats, know best how to raise their children and create a thriving society. And we know that families and churches, not government officials, know best how to create a strong and loving community. And above all else, we know this. In America, we don't worship government, we worship God.
Scientists are warning that a supervolcano under Yellowstone National Park could erupt and plunge the Earth into a volcanic winter, leading to the end of human civilization. But NASA researchers are proposing a radical solution. RT correspondent Dan Cohen has more. Yellowstone National Park attracts millions of visitors each year to see its geysers spew water hundreds of feet into the air. But the source of that heat is a supervolcano fed by a massive magma reservoir. If it erupts, it could spell disaster for humanity. While scientists agree that it's unlikely to happen anytime soon, an eruption would shoot more than a thousand cubic kilometers of rock and ash into the air, blanketing the skies of the United States and creating a volcanic winter over the planet. NASA researchers have proposed a solution, drill 10 kilometers deep into the supervolcano and pump water down under high pressure. This would slowly lower the temperature day by day, thereby avoiding an eruption. The project comes with a price tag of $3.46 billion, which seems like a hefty amount, but that's only half half a percent of the Pentagon's $700 billion budget for 2018 and less than a tenth of the $56 billion increase from 2017 to 2018. The plan could also be used to create a geothermal plant, harnessing the volcano's energy to supply the entirety of the continental United States. But building an unsightly power plant in the middle of the national park may prove unpalatable for many and could damage the unique chemistry of the geysers, though some scientists argue that careful drilling to harness the geothermal power could avoid such an environmental impact. Meanwhile, the clock is ticking to find a way to prevent an eruption that could make this Hollywood production become reality. Reporting in Washington, Dan Cohen, RT. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe to never stop questioning more.